Hello everyone, this is Ginger Pana. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, four times. This is the fourth time I'm trying to record this video. It's either I'm super out of shape quotes in doing videos on my channel. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just tired because it's almost 11 p.m. But here goes. Um, I am participating in a craft fair bake sale at work. It's a fundraiser. And um, so I am donating some things that I am making to the fair. And I wanted to come and share it with you before I bag it up and take it in. So here goes. This is what I'm making. Um, I am making these note photo holders. I guess you could use it as a to hold notes, to hold photos, to hold messages, um, inspiration, inspirational um, quotes, whatever your fancy. You can put them on these and you can put them on your desk or wherever you, your computer area or just beside your bed to remind you um, of things that make you happy. Okay, so I am going to share with you uh, my process before I show you all the ones that I make. And you can kind of see them over here already. So this is what the um, goal of what we're supposed, I'm, I wanted to try to make. Okay, so I went to my local craft store, which is Ben Franklin, and it's in Hawaii. It's the kind of the only craft store we have that sells these kind of uh, crafts stamps dyes um, wood paper crochet any lots of things that you can think of they're like our um, michaels in hawaii because we don't have any of the big box um, stores like michaels joann's or hobby lobby so um i went there and they have an unfinished wood section and i found these note holders maybe about a year ago and so i've been buying them when they go on sale and so there are two dollars and fifty cents for one and I saw some samples in the store, which is what inspired me to make these. The ones in the store, I think the bottoms were different, but the way they made their bases, um, some of them had beads in it. Um, so I took off of that inspiration for mine. Um, so these wood bases, I'm going to show you the process first before I show you what I made, um, the ones that I made. So um, you, you can take these off. These just kind of screw off. Well, they did <laughs> okay there see so it comes separate so I take the price tag off and then I paint them and I just painted them with regular acrylic paint I think these I bought from uh, Walmart or Ben Franklin our Walmart sells it for about mm, maybe a dollar 25 cents around there and so I bought them I have gazillions of paint I mean one day I'll get into my paints and things like that but so I just picked out some pastel looking colors that I could do my bases with. And I think my next time I make this, I'm going to go with what I'm going to, my theme for my bases are, whether it be sunflowers or flowers. And maybe that would dictate uh, the colors I use because I had a little hard time matching up the colors I chose to maybe thinking of an idea on what my theme was going to be. So it's okay. Okay, so after that, I paint all the bases with the paint. And so this took about um, two or three coats of paint. So what I did was I painted the top, the sides, the bottom. It dried the top, the sides, the bottom. And then um, when it became a good coating that I couldn't see the wood un hardly any under, then I stopped. I put washi tape on, I guess, either the side or the bottom, however I wanted to. I put the washi tape on and I would cut around to make the circle. Then I got the Mod Podge and I, with a sponge brush, I brushed the Mod Podge onto the wood piece, the painted wood piece, and I would brush it. And so that would seal not only the painting, make it a nice shine, and also to seal in the washi tape. Okay, so after I did that, I got my glue, my glitter, whether it be coarse, chunky, um, fine, I think. And then I sprinkled it all over. 
And um, so I got this effect. And I think next time, I think some of my glitters were really chunky. But as time went on, um, I think it got a little bit more muted. So I'm happy. At first, it was looks like I overdid the glitter. But um, like a glitter bomb went off. But after a while, the Mod Podge, the glue, they all settled. So it became a nice coating of the glitter. Okay, so after I did the glitter on the wet Mod Podge, I let it dry. And then after that, I would shake off all the glitter and I would brush it off with my hands and smooth out the edges. And then I would have this one layer of glitter left. And then I got my Mod Podge again and I sealed it again. Okay, so that'll seal in the glitter. So after that completely dried, I went and I, while that was drying, I went and I started to beat up my spiral rod here my wire rod so I came into my bead area and I started to put beads on it which again wasn't easy because I guess I have too many choices to choose from uh, which can be a good thing but yet a bad thing because I just didn't know I was opening every single container I had and so um, I managed to fill the wire with beads and it's kind of tricky to get all the sizes right so that the you want the bead to end up right at the bottom so like this one it didn't so I had to kind of cover it with a bead at the top but like this one and the others the bead went all the way up to the bottom of the spiral okay so I had to allow for the amount that was going to poke into the wood piece on the bottom and just get it just right so a lot of playing with the sizes. So after I beaded up my beads on the wire, I sporadically went between beads here and there and used glossy accents to glue it in so that it, in case this came off, it wouldn't all spill all over the place. And then I put some glossy accents in this hole. You see the pinhole? I'll put a little bit glossy accents there. And when I stuck my skewer back into the hole the Mod Podge would follow the wire. I pushed it all the way until it couldn't go in and then I let it dry so that would seal in my wire so the chances of it falling off was very would be very slim unless you really twist it out of there. Okay so I let that dry and then the last finishing touches was to get go through my cabochons and uh, fill the base with some cute accents. And so I put a bee on the top there, a sunflower and a bead here. Bee, bee. I don't know if I'm saying bead or bee. It's sunflower and bee. So these are the two bee, sunflower bee ones that I made. I love this. This was really cute. So I make, might make more of these bee ones. Okay, but I'm only going to donate 12 of these note holders to for the craft fair. Okay, so after I put the cabochons on, I let it dry completely. And then I'm going to package them. So when this video is done, I'm going to put them in the packages like I showed you earlier. Okay, so here are the other ones that I made. I made two green ones, mint green. This one has macaroons. This one has a flower washi. And then on the bottom of this flower washi, I got some cabochons. This is my bead. This is a macaroon washi. So I put some... Um, resin candies and macaroons on the bottom. This is an Oreo macaroon and a waffle um, candy. See, and this is my bee. So this one has a little bit room on it. Um, I, you see, but these I glued down so they don't move. So you kind of want it where there's no give. So I'm not sure if I might go back and put something on it or I'm just going to leave it. It's not bad if it moves around, I guess. I'm so particular with my stuff. I like them to be almost perfect if there's such a thing. Okay, and then here is a light blue one that I made. Again, macaroons. And this is a uh, butterfly and a flower. But these are flower washi. See, so this one, oh, the glitter bomb went off on this one. This one, it doesn't look so bad because the candies, but this one, you can't barely, I guess in, at certain points, you can tell this is a flower washi. So that's the blue ones. 
And then I did two pink ones. I'm not too sure if I showed you this already, but this is a pink butterfly. And in this one, I did two butterfly beads in the wire. This is another macaroon, macaron. Okay, and then uh, the last color I did made was purple. So I did three purples, three yellows, and the rest twos. So this is a flower one. This is a macaroon. And this is a butterfly with a flower. And these, I found these really nice hearts. And I may have gotten it when I traveled to California. And I went to um, Hobby Lobby, maybe. I don't know where they have really nice bead strands. Maybe um, Michael's. So I found a strand of these heart beads. They're beautiful. And I used one on the bee, the sunflower one. Isn't that cute? Okay, so that is my share of my note photo holders. I'm going to patch it, package it in this cello bag. It's gusseted. I cut a thick cardstock for the bottom to fit in there. Because they're gusseted, I made sure that the sign was in the front part and not the back part. And then I think I'm going to fold it over twice, seal it with a washi tape. And then I'm going to display them at my craft fair. And so I think I'm going to sell these for about six or seven dollars. Um, I'm sure if you went to the craft fair, if I was to sell it, I'd probably be a little bit more because maybe six dollars is my cost six, between six and seven with the the actual note holder is already two fifty, and then the painting and the Mod Podge and the glossy accents and the washi and the glitter and all the bees. Bees are expensive, and then all my resin cabochons. So they all add up, and then the the packaging, of course. So I think I'm gonna sell them for. I I'm thinking six dollars, but I it depends. I may go up to seven, and it's a fundraiser. So hundred percent of the proceeds go to our. Um, cause that we are fundraising for at work okay so thank you all for coming I will be back in another series of my craft fair uh, projects that I'm donating for the craft fair uh, I think the one that I'm going to upload first is my um, altered Walmart ornaments this is the second one the beaded note holders and I will come back and do a couple others that I've I'm just putting finishing touches on. Okay, thank you everyone for coming to see me on my video. It's great to see all of you. Uh, leave your comments in the bottom. I will hopefully get back to you. If not, I'll like it. But I'm going to try to be a little bit more active on my YouTube channel. But I do read all the comments. And I really appreciate everyone's support and staying with me through these past years. Um, one of these days we'll have a chat, but for now, thank you for coming and I will see you really soon. Bye bye.